The winter rains have lasted longer than usual. I'm not complaining because I love the heavy rains we get here. But now they're done and our winter finished with a beautiful full moon, just two days before the spring equinox. My goodness, look how beautiful the moon is. Welcome to the Republic of May. My name is Ivana and this is a channel where I share my creative journey and some parts of my life living on an island in the Mediterranean. I know that in the past couple of months and past couple of years, that's kind of a loaded question, but um, really, how are you? Um, it's been a while, and um, I just, everything is okay, everything is okay with me. Uh, I just really wasn't in the mood for social media, and I even stayed away from Instagram. I would go occasionally, but uh, really didn't spend much time there. And I really wasn't, I didn't feel like recording for, for some reason. And even now, I'm, I'm still not there. But uh, I thought it's about time because it's been almost three months. And I really want to know how you are and how everything's going. Uh, so uh, a few of you have uh, contacted me and asking about my, and you were asking about my migraines and you were concerned. So thank you. Thank you very much. I'm better. The, I did go to neurologists, I went to two neurologists and um, basically uh, they put me on some medication for um, the medication the, when I read up on it, it was more for seizures and like brain spasms, but it really didn't work for me. It was like five pills a day and it was going to be a treatment for three months and it really didn't work for me. It was making me very sick. Um, so I did stop them. But when I was looking at uh, the medication that they gave me and the fact that they're for seizures, I remembered watching one time about CBD oil and um, the effect, the positive effect that it had on, uh, on seizures. Um, it was a program that I watched years ago. And I know about CBD oil, I heard it over and over again, over and over again, but it didn't click until it clicked. So uh, I checked to see whether I can find it here in Cyprus, and I did find it. Uh, it's legal, and um, we have shops, uh, also a few shops that are specific uh, for CBD products. And I've been taking it for two and a half months now, and to tell you the truth, the migraines have uh, gotten much better. I did have another two since uh, then, but they were drastically weaker and more to tolerable than uh, before. So, fingers crossed, I'll continue with that, and uh, fingers crossed, um, we're gonna have some good good results. But back in February, um, just before I started taking uh, the CBD oil, I had one very strong attack. And uh, it lasted, it lasted for more than a week. I couldn't get out of bed. And after that, we decided, just so I can relax a bit, we decided over the weekend to go without the kids, Mario, me, my sister and her husband, uh, to one uh, resort um, in another town uh, in Cyprus. And it's a beautiful resort owned by a shipping company. We stayed... Uh, just for the weekend so the, the kids stayed with my parents but it was enough it was just a really nice 
two days for me to relax and without any stresses to enjoy the peace and walking on the beach even though it was February we didn't really swim uh, and we didn't um, swim in the pool either but it, it was nice and very much needed. Yeah, really not a bad view to wake up to. We're going for breakfast and I love hot dog breakfasts. Hear the birds. Pretty windy. Also in uh, February, um, I have harvested. Uh, we have harvested our sweet potatoes, and this is the first time um, I try to grow them. About well. This, this is the second time. I tried to grow them another one time before, but we got some really small ones the first time. This is the first time that we got nice yield. And uh, it's something that made me really happy and I was proud. And um, I... My phone's ringing. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, my mom called me. My parents are in England. So uh, we missed each other the other day when she tried to call. So she called now. And uh, to, talking about England, actually, uh, last month, Mario and uh, both my sons, they went to UK for about five days and they went to see some boxing match. I stayed, uh, I stayed here and this is the first time in about, God knows, since I remember probably about 20 years or so that I stayed alone. And I was very anxious about uh, the idea I mean, I don't know why, but when when you're so used to one way of life and always your existence being, well, at least with me, most of my grown-up life, all of my grown-up life, my existence was being connected in relationship to others as a mother, as a wife, as a daughter, never really alone. I was never alone. And I was very anxious before uh, before they left. I knew that they were going to have a good time, so I wanted them to go. I mean, they, come on, they went to see uh, Arsenal football match as well as uh, a boxing um, a boxing match. So um, they had a great time, and so did I. It's not that I had a great time, but it was actually really nice to have about five days of just being by myself at home, quiet. I can usually do whatever I want. They never really prevent me or stop me. So it's not that, but just being with myself for, for almost a week. And it was, uh, it was something that I think that I needed. But going back to uh, sweet potato. Um, so this is the first year that uh, we harvested, uh, that we got a good harvest and I was very happy about it. Now the sweet potato, you um, you don't plant it like a normal potato. With a normal potato, you get those chits, I think they're called, like the eyes, and you plant the potato in the ground, and then you, you earth it, you cover it, 
um, and that's how you would grow it. However, the sweet potato, it's uh, in the family of uh, morning glory, so it's a vine. So the way that uh, you plant sweet potato is the way that I did it this time. I have put a store-bought sweet potato. I have put it in the in the soil, half uh, half dug in the soil and half sticking out, and I was watering it for a while. So that was last year, earlier in the year, so almost a year ago now. And uh, slowly, slowly you would get these shoots that come out of the potato. And after a while, uh, when the shoots would be long enough, I would break them off of the potato and uh, put them in the water in order to root. After they would root, it would take only a couple of days, I would put them in the soil and this is how it would take off. Usually this is where sweet potatoes would develop, but then the vine actually takes over the ground. So I, I would space them out, those different shoots that are rooted in the soil, and then slowly it would take over and they grow really, really fast, the actual vine. To your eyes, I see we're out of time I guess no one's to blame, nobody crossed the line I guess we couldn't see, somehow we couldn't feel Maybe we rose so fast, maybe we got too high So as far as the making is concerned, I made quite a few things over the past couple of months. Um, the, I have made a few jumpers, but the latest one that I, that I have made is this one uh, that I'm wearing right now. And this is the only one that I have uh, to show you at the moment. It was... Uh, I used two strands of yarn. One was my hand spun, which was a blend of um, baby llama in natural black color and uh, blue face Lester in natural oatmeal color. So this one, what I have done is I have uh, I held uh, one strand of uh, this uh, 
hand spun yarn and one strand of black um, cascade uh, fingering and it is um, uh, it's a raglan jumper with a little bit higher neck not uh, not a turtle and I don't think it's a complete funnel neck but um, but a bit higher neck like this which I really like but and I have made the sleeves quite tight and it's wide and I'm happy with it I didn't wash it yet uh, but I don't know I I don't feel like it really needs blocking I mean I will do it it's just uh, I wore it right away I finished it yesterday and uh, the reason why this is the only one that I have to show you is that the previous two ones have um, uh, well, the, the other one that I made was uh, a strand of uh, brushed alpaca silk from Drops and uh, a strand of um, another yarn in black that I made. It was a drop shoulder and uh, I never wore it. I took it with me to, um, to this hotel when we went um, for the weekend. And I said to my sister, I said, try this, uh, try this model to see if it uh, if it suits you. So I know for the future if uh, to make you this uh, this type of jumper for your birthday or something like that. And I didn't even wear it yet. I took it with me to uh, to wear it um, there at the hotel. And she put it on, and it just fit her perfectly. So I just said, okay, there you go. You know, take it, keep it, and I will make another one for myself. So the one after that that I made was a raglan jumper that uh, it was again with two strands. One strand uh, of, um, it's a blend of alpaca, merino and a bit of nylon and one strand of uh, mohair. And I made that one, I wore it that night and I was going to my parents' house the next day. And as I was leaving the house, I was wearing that jumper. I thought, you know what, this jumper is going to really look good on my mom. I said, just in case, I'm going to take a spare jumper with me and we'll see. And I went there and I said to my mom, I said, mom, I said, can you try this jumper to see the same, the same thing like I did with my sister to see if the model um, is good on you so I can make it in the future. And she tried it on and it was just perfect on her. So again, I just said, okay, here you go. I have a spare jumper that I took with me and, uh, and she kept it and she really needed it now um, when they went uh, to UK. So I'm really glad about that. So I made those, uh, those two jumpers as well, but I didn't get to keep them. I will make more in the future for myself, but I'm really happy that, um, that it suits them so much and uh, that, that they like them. I did make this one and this one is mine. I'm not giving it to anybody. I'm keeping this one. I mean, come on. The third one is a charm and this one is mine. So there you go. I have also finished uh, the brioche blanket that uh, I've been knitting for some months now. That one is made, made entirely out of my hand spun yarn, merino, 100% merino. And I have blended uh, natural brown merino with natural white uh, as I was spinning it and it took me it took me a while uh, because I mean to spin the yarn for the whole blanket and then to knit it and I was knitting it uh, gently on the cut at the first I could do it on the chair in front of my computer but as the blanket got big then I would knit it only on the couch and also there were times uh, that I would love to sit um, underneath the pergola while it was raining and uh, knit on that blanket and I actually remember one day that uh, I have recorded while I was knitting and it was raining it was winter it was raining but it was such a you know those moments that that you remember them clearly as a perfect moment and you can't put your finger on it it's not one particular thing but when everything comes together it was not too cold I was sitting outside underneath uh, I was covered and it was raining and knitting on that blanket um, what else did I make um, 
thought you made quite a few things, but oh yes, it was a friend of mine's birthday uh, end of February, and uh, I wanted to weave a shawl for her, uh, which I just finished a couple of days ago. I didn't finish it in time, but uh, it came out nice. I, her favorite color, I don't know if it's her favorite color, but the color that I see her wearing the most is red. Uh, and also black, but mostly red. So I definitely wanted to incorporate uh, red in the shawl. Um, so I used uh, like a combination of red and uh, brownish beige and black. So I'm going to give it to her. I think I'm going to see her now on Wednesday. And I'm going to give it to her and I hope she really likes it. And that day, uh, last week, as I was, um, I was finishing the shawl outside, I was, uh, I was weaving outside and I was thinking, I said, oh, I hope my neighbor comes out of uh, her house because I want to give her some passion fruit that we have collected from a vine. I know her kids like it. And as I was thinking that, I see my neighbor running out of her house and she goes, oh, did you hear? Did you hear? Shall we go and buy the pots? I was like, what pots? And there was this um, truck going around the neighborhood. And this is something that I still really, really love in Cyprus. Something that probably in other countries it was done a uh, long time ago. But here they still do it. They go with trucks around the neighborhoods and they either sell vegetables. And they kind of speak on this uh, speaker, like a, not megaphone, but the speaker on top of the truck. Uh, they go around the villages selling uh, things. And in this case, it was not vegetables, but the guy was passing and he was selling these uh, terracotta pots uh, from Crete, from an island in Greece, which is really kind of serendipity uh, because for months now, every time we pass next to those uh, shops uh, that sell those large, ceram uh, those large uh, terracotta flower pots, uh, I say to Mario, oh, I want to stop and I want to buy. I, we need some for the garden. And they're always so pretty. And he was just there. He came to our neighborhood. And uh, as my neighbor was running out and uh, she said, uh, oh, should we go and see the pots? I went and I bought them, which is really, really good. Because uh, after I, I got a few, I saw how heavy they are. And I wouldn't know how else I would carry them if I went to the shop by myself. So these are the pots that I got. Hey, Baguette. What's up? So, um, so these are the pots that I got. And these larger ones are the original terracotta pots from uh, Crete. So this is the largest one that I got. And then two of a uh, little bit smaller ones. I wanted to get them for a really long time. And I'm kind of glad that... Uh, the guy was passing by our neighborhood because they're really, really heavy and I don't know how I would have carried them or put them in the car. So these, as I said, are the original uh, terracotta pots from Crete and they were the more expensive ones. I think the, the largest one was 100 euro and the smaller ones, this one and uh, this one, they were 50 each. And I got... Uh, four other small, smaller ones, but they're not small, they're, they're actually quite big, but they're lower and, uh, and wider. And these look like uh, they were machine made, that, like they were factory made, uh, the, the finish is uh, newer, and they were very, very reasonably priced. Uh, the reason why I told you the prices for the other ones is because these ones, they were 15 euro each and I think that is a very good price and maybe I'm going to go to the shop um, of the people that uh, they were going around the neighborhood and get some more and they all have uh, drainage holes um, inside so that's good because here in the winter we do get some very heavy rains, kind of uh, tropical rains and it's mandatory to have drainage holes. The big ones, they didn't have them, but uh, I asked the guy to drill some as, uh, as he brought them inside the garden. So let me show you a bit from, uh, from further. They're not going to stay here, but I'm really, really happy that I got them. So the, the smaller ones over here, uh, because they have such a new finish, like uh, 
clean finish I think I'm going to paint them and I did paint terracotta pots before and I painted them in black and some of them in white and they look do look very beautiful once they are painted the larger ones because they already have some sort of patina I think I'm going to um, leave uh, as they are and then just let them weather on their own what was important to me with the uh, terracotta pots is that the neck here is not much um, uh, narrower than, uh, than the body, than the belly of the pot. That the opening is almost as wide as, uh, as the lower part. Because a lot of them that I saw on the truck, they kind of had this real kind of vase pot um, roundness to them. But I know from experience that that is really not practical because in that case when you when the plant outgrows the pot and you want to transplant it you can't really because the the wider part in the middle gets filled up with roots and you can't really pull it out uh, from the top. So whatever goes in that kind of pot stays there unless you want to break the pot. So that was important to me that uh, the tops were uh, were wide and uh, that's why I chose those ones otherwise there was so much more selection like this one here this was also terracotta pot that I have painted in black and uh, when I transplant things from that one things come out very easily because uh, it's quite straight uh, the opening on top this other yucca, yucca that, um, that I have here actually this is planted in uh, garbage uh, in the garbage bin I don't know if you can see it let me try from here you can see this is a garbage bin that I have uh, planted it in I drilled the holes uh, um, uh, underneath and uh, it it's great it really is I mean they're very inexpensive they fit a lot of soil so you can plant uh, big things inside and what I did I just built like a wooden frame around it. Yes, baguette. See? I don't know what he wants. I keep on feeding him, but you know. There you go. You have a leaf here. Okay, so uh, just to finish, um, I have quite a few uh, pots like this that I have used plastic uh, cheap pots. Either um, some laundry bins that I drilled uh, drainage holes underneath or garbage bins like this and I build like a wooden frame around it and it just looks so beautiful so I hope I really hope that you are well I told you it's to ask you how how you are it's we hear too we hear too many times especially in English, and I'm sure in, in other languages as well, but let's say because I'm talking in English now, you, you hear too many times people saying, you're right, you're right, but nobody really waits for an answer. And I want to know how you are. Are you okay? What's, what's making you happy in this craziness that's, that's going on now? I want to leave you with a quote that um, my niece, she, she studies in England and uh, when she went to, uh, well, she finished studying, but uh, when she went um, to England the last time, uh, she left a quote that was written on a post-it note um, in her bathroom and she stuck it uh, on the mirror. I don't know where is the quote from. I think she found it in, in a book. But when I saw it, it was, it really touched me in, um, on a deeper level. And um, I'll read it to you right now. Just give me a sec. Um, okay. I have the computer in front of me. I want to leave you with that quote because I think it's quite, um, what's the word? I think it's important in this moment. So the quote says, I shall pass this way once. Any good, therefore, that I can do or any kindness I can show to any human being, 
Let me do it now. Let me not defer nor neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. So, I hope you will. And uh, <clears throat> I will see you soon. Bye for now.